presentation thing option for, for PowerPoint. But um, so anyway, it's a, um, a way to offer classes um, online but synchronously, right? Has anyone done any synchronous communication in an online class of any, of any type? What, what do you use? <laughs> My class, okay. Yeah, well, we did this actually this summer. Yeah, what do you use? In the, in the game lab training, we actually had some real life, real time meetings. We used real the, time? Yeah, real, well. What do you use? We used Ventrilo, um, and we also met in Second Life. Okay, oh, in Second Life, cool. Very cool. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of education. We need, we need a Second Life presence, I think, but there's all sorts of institutions hey, who is, that... Who is working on that? Yeah, they have their own... Like, U of A has their own island. I think they call it Cibola or something, and it's where the, once you get in there, you're, you only speak Spanish. It's really cool. What, what, other, what other synchronous things do you... You use WizIQ, which is very similar, actually, very similar to Collaborate. It used to be called Illuminate. Um, so why is, it, why is it important to have a synchronous element, or is it important in an online class? Does the telephone count? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. I've used that in a class, the telephone. Oops. That's sure. Why do you think it's important? Well, actually, I was reminded that I used to use Skype and Makogo together. Makogo. Oh, use Skype session. with that. OK. Both things, um, combining. You know, the question we've been asking, or I've been asking, you know, discussions uh, about can you have a synchronous class in a strictly online uh, class? And right. It would have a required synchronous. Yeah. Because so, schedule wise, I think they built my summer class, because my summer class is we set it up that they would meet one night a week in Black, in Collaborate, that it was part of the class. So we called it hybrid because you had to be there for that section. But it was all online. People, there, I don't think I met anybody from this. You know, we never did anything in person. It was all online. So um, I just had some, some facts. I took a, at the same time I was offering a class through um, Collaborate, I was taking a class called the Perfect Online Course, and it was an instructional design class. And it, talk, and it was basically talking about how to make your online classes more effective. And they had all these top 10 things that you should do. And in all the top 10 um, little countdowns of things to include in an online class, all of them, we did like five where we looked through different things. All of them had, you should have both synchronous and asynchronous communication. Um, what do you think that's, that, um, that a synchronous communication would add to an online class? Um, and uh, I, I think it adds some, um, I need an answer soon. Or I have a question right now, and I need this answer right yeah. now. And whether that's office hours or yeah. a whole class discussion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it gives immediate, immediacy in the feedback. Yeah. I think also just having, having personal interaction is just you know, something that yeah. most of us enjoy at some level. Right, right. Having, creating that interaction is actually key. Um, and it create it, it's what we call in, in the online world uh, creating a presence in the class where you feel connected to something. A lot of the reasons that students typically cite for getting out of a class um, that's online is feelings of isolation. They feel like nothing is linking them to the interface of the content or the instructor, the instructional interface. Yeah. Spontaneity too. You don't know really where it's going to go at that point versus. Right. 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 Yeah. The feedback I've gotten from my online class is students want to see me more. They want to see you more. So no, there's a human back there. The one piece that I'm missing that I have to figure out how to They want to see you more. Okay. And there's lots of ways to be synchronous. You could have something as simple as a, as Amiibo chat bar where you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be online. Every time I'm online, I'm going to log into Amiibo, and then you'll see that I'm online, and you can, you can instantly text chat with me at least, right? It, it might not be that instructive, but at least you're getting like quick answers, like when is this assignment due or whatever. So s some way it's synchronous. Um, I just wanted to share, as, as part of that class that I took, um, I did a, a paper on uh, attrition in online classes. And uh, d has anybody seen here at YC greater attrition in online classes than their brick and mortar in-person classes? You, you've seen it? Yeah. Suzanne? I don't know. I think maybe a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know that that is the trend. I bet that online. varies by subject matter, though. Right. I, mean, I was teaching pharmacology online. How boring could it be, right? <laughs> well, so. see, you know, those are really <laughs> yeah, exactly. to, to exactly. suck on them. Yeah. Okay, so I just, I got, to, as part of this paper that I wrote, I got some facts. Online learner attrition rates, um, a couple researchers uh, estimated as high as 80%. Okay, in some cases. Okay, um, what else? Nearly 35% of online learners that were polled dropped their courses before submitting their first assignment. Nearly 35%, nationwide anyway. Um, and some of the reasons that, that, that they said were um, feelings of isolation. And this is what a researcher named Moore calls transactional distance. Transactional distance is the distance that the learner feels separates him or her from the to be learned material. It's creating that interface with the learning context, which is hard. So all these things, um, research shows that some kind of synchronous communication is key, especially towards the beginning of, of um, the term, the learning cycle. Um, if you can have some sort of synchronous uh, communication, it reduces the, att the attrition rate, so, so the research shows. Um, what else do I wanna share with you about that? Um, some, other, some other pluses, students' questions are answered in real time. Um, so like we said, the feedback is more immediate. Um, and also you can create that um, for problem-based learning things. Some sort of immediate synchronous interaction is key. So you can create, um, if you're going to have some sort of problem-based learning, and Thatcher can testify, we had a lot of problem-based learning activities. And trying to do that over the space of a week is just frustrating. But if it's immediately, right now, synchronous, you can pull off a problem-based learning. That's just something that's very hard to pull off in an online environment without some sort of synchronous communication. Um, so why, why um, collaborate? I keep wanting to call it illuminate because that's what it used to be called for so long. Why collaborate? Um, Collaborate, I'm going to show you a little bit of the features, but why this model over other things? WizIQ is pretty good. Um, I don't know, has anybody seen Adobe Connect? Yeah, Adobe Connect is very, very similar, but I think uh, illuminates a little bit better, has a little bit more features. Um, I've, had, I've done a lot of different synchronous. Yeah? You'd be remiss at this point in time not mentioning Google Plus. Google Plus. Google Plus is very good. So yeah, especially if you're doing a Skype sort of scenario, Google Plus is a great option um, uh, for Skype-like interactions. Um, but why, why collaborate? It's very reliable. Very reliable. I don't think I've ever not been able to connect or been kicked out of a session. I mean, it's very, very reliable. And it works. I've had a student um, that used Collaborate on a dial-up connection with success. And that's what they tout a lot, that they have this great buffer and it allows them to use um, very slow connections. Okay, and it also works on PC or Mac, which is huge for a lot of our students. Seems like it depends on the institution you're at, but if you're like on a Mac, some of the institutions say, ah, you know, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and, and vice versa in, in some instances too, so very good. Um, uh, other, other reasons you might be able to use this, you can do online office hours. You know, if you have an online um, class, online office hours are great where you get that interaction. Does anybody do any sort of online office hours? What do you do for that? Um, usually make myself available on Skype. Okay, make yourself available on Skype, good. So this helps you have a little bit more didactic interactions um, for online office hours. This is great when, if you've ever had, taught an online class, maybe you've seen a bunch of students struggle with the same thing. A lot of times in Collaborate, I'll just say, hey, anybody that wants to know about Sarah and Astar issues, everybody show up at this time and then you can log in and we all meet up together. So it's good for that. Um, gets everybody on the same page that way. You can answer common questions. Laura talked about that last time, so sometimes she'll just do a, a, a YouTube video about everybody's having a problem with comma splice or whatever it was, then you just do a real quick video. But this is good because then you can answer specific questions about that. Yeah? Do you, like you said, if someone has a common problem, everyone meet at this time? Because it's an online class, everyone is different. 
you know, availability, mm-hmm. and you record it and post it, so if you can. have the problem, could then, although could Yeah, it. yeah, and it's, it's even better than just doing a video, because a lot of times those students will have questions that you don't see, just because, you know, we're experts and we don't even think about some of the questions that they have. Um, but yeah, students will ask those questions, like three or four other students would have that same question. So you can, that's the beautiful thing about Illuminate, is that you can archive it, and you can just send out a link and say, hey, if you, did, if you missed this, the Sarah versus the star explanation, get in here and check it out. And then they'll see that interaction. They'll hear the student that comes in with that question and says, I didn't understand that part. Can you explain it again? Or, you know, what about this? And, and the students will see other students' questions, which is really good. Go ahead, Tom. And I, think, I think that, you know, this is owned by Blackboard, both this product, Collaborate. So, and, and it's tightly woven into the Blackboard environment. And much like our integrity system is kind of tightly woven into Blackboard, there are licenses that you can purchase that would put this content recorded right into your Blackboard course once the session is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. It's it's similar to what we use tightly woven. Yeah. A little more proprietary than I like, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that is a definite plus for it. Um, what else? Um, Debbie Roberts, who doesn't love teaching online, she was telling me that she's going to do it, and hopefully I can help her, because she wants her online classes to have the same discussion and debates that she has in person. It's really good for that, actually. Um, very interesting, though, too. After, after I've taught with this a couple of semesters, um, I have kind of mixed feelings about it, as you do with anything online. From the back end, as a teacher, you are a multitasking machine. There's a lot going on because uh, you'll see it in a second when we pull it up, but there's texting, that they'll, they'll be texting, there'll be a whole conversation of texting going on, and you're trying to teach, and you're trying to get, get them set up in their own little breakout rooms, and so it's, it's a lot to, to do, um, but you can run it in a very simple way as well. Uh, but there, there's a lot of good options. I can't exactly remember where I was going with that. But. Do you get private messages from students as well? You can. You can, that are, that are, usually when they send you a message, it's f- everyone can see it, but they can, there is an option for them to choose only the instructor can see this, yeah. And it's really funny when they think that they're sending a private message, because they can send private messages to students, but any moderator has privileges to see that, so they're sending these private messages that you see, you're like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, you find out some interesting things. Yeah. And then right after that, I send a message to the whole class. Remember, the moderator can view all messages. <laughs> and they're like, ooh. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say. At the, end of, um, at the end of doing this the last couple semesters, I've had students that say, I feel like I actually have interacted more um, through the online environment than I would have if I was in a face-to-face class, which I'm like, whoa. That's amazing. Why? You know, they're, they're comfortable. They're in their own home. You know, they have their teddy bear, whatever, there with them, you know. And um, plus, in class, you know how it is. There's those students that try to hide. And, you know, and especially in Spanish, this is what they do. I'm like, okay, talk about um, this weekend, what you did. And they get in their groups. And then um, four or five students pretend to be looking something up in the back of the book for the three or four minutes that we do this. They're like, oh, yeah. You know, and their heads down, and I'm like, in this, in this environment, you'll see once it's somebody's turn, the microphone gets turned over to them, and then it's just dead silence until they speak. And so they have to interact, and it forces them to. And I've, students every time say, you know what, I think I do more interacting online, which is really cool. So let's check it out. Let's check it out. <laughs> so one thing, as, um, as Todd is, is demonstrating, is we have this whiteboard space, and there's a lot of different tools you can use. You can use a text box. I can like highlight things and eliminate them. <laughs> I might do that for <laughs> forever with Todd. Uh, <laughs> but you can. Um, there, this even works with math. There's like formulas you can put in. And um, what I usually use is just this text box. You click anywhere and start typing. Um, there's lots of options to make it larger. Right. Um, so anything that appears on this board, everyone in um, the session can see. Yeah. Well, what I do, and I bet you this will work, uh, what I do is I take a lot of pictures, like screenshots from my, just from Word. And whatever you can make in Word, Word if you make a screenshot, you can plug it in here. Um, you can upload any image. So you click here, you can upload an image. You just browse from it, an image from your computer. 
right? So the whiteboard, what I like about it that's a little different from Skype or other things, um, very similar to WizIQ though, is you can do stuff here, right? You can explain something here. I'm constantly, like uh, Suzanne just, you click here and click load content, you browse for something, and you can upload, especially PowerPoints are good. Okay, so if you want to kind of lecture, um, you can lecture with your PowerPoint. Okay, so the whiteboard has tons of features. Um, a little bit tricky, um, let's see, new page, there we go. A little bit tricky to remember what page you can see and what page other people can't see. So a lot of, th it is a little tricky, you have to get used to it, but um, you can put something in here on your private page and once it's in here, you can copy and paste it to a public page. And um, once it's in the collaborate environments, you can take it into these different slides. Remember which slide you're on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what, what you guys are seeing right here is Susan, Susan Wallenberger's PowerPoint presentation. Where is it? That we just clicked upload content there. It mm -hmm. allows for her PowerPoint presentation and it uploaded it into this, in, into this environment. So that's why there's all those different slides. Mm -hmm. And um, there's this new thing now called Page Explorer, which is nice in this new edition. And you can look through, which slide do I need to be on here? And you can click immediately on that slide and go to it. You know what? I'm still on public page one. Why is that? That's a little tricky because um, I don't have click uh, follow the instructor. So if you click follow the instructor wherever you're at, they will follow you. Okay. The beautiful thing is, look at all these. So we're going to, OK, I want to make sure that I, I do all these. So you can upload PowerPoints. Uh, as we've seen, you can share um, any sort of application, or you can even in share your entire desktop. So you click here, and it says, what, what do you want to share? You can share your entire desktop, just like Mikogo or something else. And it's pretty good. It's not as good as Mikogo for desktop sharing. but. You can show people, it's great for a process, like especially at the beginning of a, an online class, I bet you you would have this if it was online in Game Lab. People have questions about processes. How do I do this? How do I get logged in? This is a great way to show them, um, okay, I'm gonna show you on my desktop exactly how to do it. And they see the process and they can ask you questions real time. Um, this is a web tour, so anything you see on the web you can see through, collaborate, you can broadcast to people. Doesn't work well if you want to show like a YouTube video or something, but uh, pretty much anything you can see on the web you can show off this way. Here is where my participants are, okay? So here's a whole bunch of people that are, that are remote and checking us out. Um, but this is what you would normally see all the people in, um, in the class. You can have just one person talking, that's the best, and you pick up the mic like a CB, right? You click talk, and now you have the mic. That's the best way in my mind. If you have multiple, um, you can have multiple talkers. So if anybody says anything, it'll come through. You can have six of those, six people talking at once, which gets extremely chaotic. It's just like face to face. Yeah, it's just like that. It's just, yeah, exactly. But I like to just have it one simultaneous talker at a time. And then um, you click the, the mic button, it's really easy, and I, now they can't hear me, so I'm going to stop doing that. But you click that button and then the mic is live and somebody can grab it. And they pick up the mic and they can speak. Okay, what was your question? When you're broadcasting, so those people that are on the, the participants, mm -hmm. do they see the whole thing or do they just see the, do they see the other participants in the chat? or does the... Six people can, can broadcast video. So same thing with uh, audio. Typically, this is why I call it a virtual audio classroom. Typically, I don't have anybody broadcast video. I don't even broadcast my so video. What are they seeing here? Like, this is people that are watching. They see. What do they see? They see the same thing. Oh, okay. They see this. They Not see the all of this. Thing. This is exactly what a student would see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a couple options. Like, you can eliminate this pane here. But, you know, when you're working on things, it's good to have it there. So. Um, I want to show you something that, that is very key for this environment. So the, the problem is when you're talking to the whole class, just like when you're talking to your whole class, not much interaction goes on. What you like is those small group discussions. This is great for that. Um, 
All right, so you can click on any one person, right click on their name, and then you can say send to a breakout room. Okay, create a new private breakout room, and they will go to their own room where they're, they're all by themselves. There's also options. Um, so you can send them to their room. You can send them to their room, <laughs> exactly. There's also options to. Um, to create, so say you want to do it very quickly. You just want to say, get in a random group, um, number of rooms. This is what I do. Divide into groups of two. So you want, to, you want them to pair off. Okay? You and another person are going to talk about this topic. Okay, so now we are all split up. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I don't know. They're all split up into, so here's Linda and Raylene are in room two, right? Stacy and Todd are in room one. And they have options to access a microphone and, uh, and begin chatting one with another. So now the microphone options are a lot better for them. There's only two of them, okay? So I usually say get in this, this breakout group and talk to one another, okay? Um, so, um, so hopefully everyone's back to the main room now. Let's see. So like Stacy and Todd, are they just watching blanks right now? What do they see? Well, let's let's put ourselves in into that room so we can see. Okay, so now we're YC tells, aren't we? I believe we are. If I put myself into this room, this is what they see. Nothing right now. <laughs> the kind of the drawback that I don't like is if you want them to see something in that room, like talk about this photo, you have to um, copy and paste it. So you have to put yourself into each one of these rooms and copy and paste that photo, which takes about three, two to three minutes, depending on how big your class is and how big your, you know, if you only have two or three rooms, it's not that bad. But if you have like six rooms where they're all in. So now it's just us three in this one room. And uh, we have the chance to talk about something on the screen or just talk about a topic that we have. It's usually for me, I have something on the screen and I want them to talk about it. Yeah? So if you put two or three people in a room, then they may see whatever's on the screen, but they're just using the little chat box below and they're typing to each other? No, they, they have a microphone. They're talking to each other. Yeah, they can pull up a microphone and begin using it. Do I don't, you hear those conversations? You can't listen to them. Only if I'm in their room. Yeah. So I actually, this is my little, my little avatar, and so I have to be in their room to hear their conversation. It's funny though, because they can see just like we see. Right now, it's Stacy and Todd and myself in the same room. If they, well, on their little headphones, they see me hop into their room, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Cortis is here, <laughs> right?" And so then they start to really put on their A game. Thatcher's smiling because he was doing this <laughs> this summer. So, yeah, and so it's really easy to put people in those breakout rooms, and I think that's the the big plus of the whole thing. Um, <laughs> so where you go in incognito, they can't tell that you're in there. There should be. I suggested that actually. I thought that that would be good too because they really act different. But um, anyway, so I think that that is especially the big value added for us, that you have those little rooms and they're so easy to create. So I'm gonna bring everybody back to the main room hopefully. Let's see how I... Is everybody in the main room now? Oh, it says I've been moved to the main room. Rich is applauding. Rich you guys can see that. Rich was confused. He had a little confused. <laughs> 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 I don't know what that meant. Which isn't the best because they were all in their own little rooms. Why? <laughs> right? They were all in their own little rooms. And they couldn't, they didn't know what was going on, probably. <laughs> Which is the drawback to having the, the medium also be the presentation. But so here we're all back in this main room. You can see the main room there. There's nine participants. And all of the breakout rooms are empty. Okay. There's no click to like ring the bell, come back to class and <laughs> You can't, yeah, once they're all in their breakout rooms, they're all in their individual rooms. And the only way to, to talk to them all is to bring them all back. 
And so a lot of times, which is kind of the drawback too, they'll be talking about something, sometimes unrelated to the content, and they're still talking about it in the main room. And they have their mic live, and they're like, da 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 yeah, I, I can't believe you kissed him either. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> and so you have to be very careful. You've got to take away their microphone, like, immediately. And you get on, because some conversations try to come over. Go ahead, Todd. You've got to press the talk button and the video button. OK. So OK. Tell everybody you're back there. OK, we're back. Still, yeah, so OK. So those people were in limbo. <laughs> and I'm still on my room one. Tell them they're going to have to watch the video. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it is. You can see it's a lot of multitasking. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I have a question about mm -hmm. in there. I tried the session. Mm -hmm. I had this big plans for the semester because I have an online class, but it's in them little boxes of parts to dissect at home and thought we'll do in class labs, but they could be in the kitchen doing it, but then if they needed help, I could sit there and do it with them. So I had this session open, uh -huh. all I had was the tiny little webcam in the corner, and I could not make it the big one, so I could say, here's oh. is there a way to do that? I tried the screen share with opening up Logitech in its own way. Oh, share. did it work? No. Yeah, because when you, when you screen share video, it doesn't work well. It was having a problem. I there, there must be, do you know if there's a view where you, you see bigger, bigger video? Where? Kelly Trainer helped me, but it was the Google Plus was really good for that. Yeah, yeah, this isn't the best for video. It really isn't. It's great for sharing um, material, but it's not great for showing you. It really isn't, in, in my experience. Yeah. Screening video like this is huge bandwidth. You know? Oh. You think YouTube buffers, this is like... Yeah. Okay, really fast. Where do you get one? Todd, the cons to this, you have to work with Todd. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> no, no, working with Todd is great. <laughs> They're going to edit that out of the, the video. Um, you, you have to schedule it when you use Todd's um, nine licenses, which is fine. You see everyone that's using it, which is usually not that backlogged. You can usually get on almost any time you want. Hopefully in the future, maybe after this presentation, more people will start using it because it's pretty easy to use. Um, but you have to schedule a time, and it sends you a link as the moderator and says, click on this, you'll be the moderator. And it sends you a link for students. And students don't have control over certain things. So that's one way. And you have to get a username and password. There's another way to get this. If you only want three total participants, it's called Illuminate Vroom. If you do a search for Illuminate Vroom, you can get this on your own. Um, and the problem is only three people can get in, which is great for online office hours. Okay? It's free. You have it for a year to kind of try it out. And then you can just get another one after that year. I've used it for a long time. And it's great for online office hours. That's the best. The problem is no archiving, so you can't record the sessions. Okay. Um, another option, Blackboard Course Sites. Has anyone used that? I used, the, in fact, I, I didn't, we didn't have the licenses through Todd, and so I used Blackboard Course Sites, and it's really good, but it's very tricky to get your students to log in correctly. I don't know if anybody's had that problem, but it is very tricky. Um, there are other options. The shady option is to get it from this guy. Okay. <laughs> But there are, there are definitely other options. I have some references there. But any other questions, you can get that presenta this presentation here. <laughs>